today we're going to be talking about the PAL wireless Wiegand cloud-based access control. That's a whole lot of really cool words smushed into a sentence to try to describe to you uh, just how good the PAL product is, the PAL product line is, and how good the PAL system that we're going to be talking about today is. We have done other webinars on other PAL products up to this point. The one relay controller that did, does the PAL uh, proprietary non-clonable transmitters. And we're excited to introduce to you now the wireless Wiegand cloud-based PAL controller. You've seen the literature in our ads and marketing campaigns all about both physical Wiegand credentials or mobile virtual credentials through the app, as well as, which we haven't really promoted much, that's what I'll be talking about, which is uh, non-clonable handheld transmitters, the same PAL transmitters that work with the other PAL devices for those sites that are very worried about security. All three can be used with this new PAL system. We've sold, already sold a pretty good amount of them, have had really, really good feedback, and are always adding to the features uh, and the benefits of this product. So today we're excited to show it to you. My goal today, just like every other time we do a webinar, is to give you as much information as possible in a short amount of time so you guys can get back out bidding jobs uh, and installing jobs. We know that you're busy. So today we're going to walk through the wiring of the PAL controller, which is uh, probably the most basic wiring you will ever see on an access control system, and it gives you everything that you could really ever need. We're going to walk through the features and the benefits of this product and then walk you through the software and show you how it works. So we're excited to do that today. We have Alex at the controls who's looking for questions, so feel free to stop me at any time to ask any questions that you have. If I don't know the answer, I will straight up lie to you. Uh, just kidding, I won't lie. I'm pretty sure I make that joke every single time we do a webinar. I've never heard a laugh through the computer yet, so if someone tell me, ha ha, that's funny, then I'll keep doing it. Uh, if I don't know the answer, I'll find the answer and we, we will get back to you. And also what we always talk about is we never discuss pricing on uh, these webinars, but I can tell you that the price of this controller compared to anything else that anyone else is going to be bidding against you is way less expensive than what they're going to be bidding. Not only is it less expensive for the hardware, but the feature sets and functionality of the cloud-based access gives your customers so much uh, customization and so, so easy to use that really when you show it to them, you're going to win every single job. So the PAL wireless Wiegand controller was built because we know that trenching and running wire and even just dealing with networks for access control can be a huge headache. Not only is it costly, but it also could take a lot of time. And anytime you're getting involved in any sort of network stuff, plugging into the networks, getting IP addresses, port forwards, all that stuff, it can just become a nightmare, nightmare dealing with IT guys or firewalls or whatever it may be. So we wanted to release this product and, and join up with PAL so that we could give you something that you can literally walk out to any job, door, gate, whatever it may be, look at the situation and get in and out, install it, get out of there quickly for a very low cost and get on with the job. So let's jump over. I want to show you what the PAL we wireless Wiegand controller looks like and show you the inputs and the outputs so you can understand a little bit better and we'll talk concept of where you're going to install it, what type of install installations it works for, and then we'll jump over to the software. So let's jump over to uh, the PAL controller. So you can see we've put together this demo board of the PAL wireless Wiegand controller. And the goal here is simplicity. So let's imagine a job for, for a second. You, go, you get a call, you go out to a job, and they say, I really want to be able to track and manage with transmitters who's coming and going. I want to see when they came in, who it was, uh, I want to see, I, want, I need to set an automatic uh, open and close timer for the gate. I want it to open at 8 a.m. every morning and close at noon, and then they have to use their transmitters. And I want to restrict access. I only want vendors coming in at certain times. I only want the dog walkers coming in at certain times. Whatever it may be. Most guys are going to quote a pretty expensive access control system, and then they still have to figure out a way how to get network wire to that access control system or pay expensive fees for point-to-point -point internet or whatever it may be. The costs are adding up very, very, very quickly. Any wireless device you're going to use, you've got to add that to your bid. 
along with the access control system and then the credentials, everything is adding up very quickly. What this PAL system does is allow you to take this little tiny box, which I said, once you hear the cost from your sales rep, you'll be blown away with, with how much it costs. Take it out there. There are literally, I think, eight, let me count, two, four, six, eight inputs on this controller that you wire up and then you power it on. You do not have to connect to any network or Wi-Fi. We totally bypass the network and Wi-Fi. And the way that we do that is there's a SIM card. You can't see it, but there's a SIM card inside this PAL system, it's actually right here, that automatically finds the strongest network between AT&T and T-Mobile. There's nothing you have to do. You power it on, it goes out and searches, and it says, okay, which network is stronger, AT&T or T-Mobile, and then it latches on to the stronger of those. And if one goes down, it will, it will automatically switch to the, other, to the other one. So you automatically already have the fact that you've got two, two very reliable big networks working. Because it's, it's going through a SIM card, that means you can put these anywhere without having to worry about trenching or networking or Wi-Fi of any kind, which is also really nice. And the SIM card fee is almost nothing. Again, we're not going to talk about price, but the SIM card fee is take all those other SIM devices that you've used, cellular connected devices that you've used, and the cost that those are, and just get rid of that in your mind because we're nowhere near those costs, okay? So it connects to the network, which is going to connect you to our cloud-based access control system or cloud software, which you can manage through the web portal or also through the app, which will be showing both of you. So you can see we have a couple lights here. This light here is your main power light and your network light, so you know the system is on and it's connected when it's solid to the network. When you first boot it up, it's going to blink a little bit. And then when it goes solid, you know you're connected to the network. And then these are your indication lights of how strong the signal is. Uh, really, any time you get any one of these lights, you're good. You're going to be connected, and the system is going to be working. So what we want to make sure that you do before you do any installations is just go out there with your cell phone and make sure that you have uh, cellular connection. As long as you have cellular connection, this system is going to work. We've put it in places where the cellular connection is not fantastic. We do offer two antennas. This is the cellular antenna. This is a 4G system, by the way. This is the 4G antenna. This does not ship with the product. We've moved away, and we're, all, we're shipping a longer antenna so that you can put this box inside. A, you can put this PAL unit inside a weatherproof box or inside the gate operator. And then our antenna is actually a coax antenna with an F connector that just screws on, and you have, you have about four feet of wire to work with, and then the, the antenna is actually magnetized, and the antenna is about this long. So this is your cellular 4G antenna, which we send a longer coax antenna, so expect that in the box. This antenna is for the proprietary 433 megahertz non-clonable PAL remotes, which many of you have seen. You can see on our website. This is that an, the antenna for that. So if you're going to be using the PAL remotes because your site doesn't want clonable remote, doesn't well, wants to make sure they can't be cloned or copied or, or duplicated, then you're going to want to use that antenna for, for those uh, remotes, okay? So now we've got that. An important note to keep in mind, and I will mention this throughout the presentation, is that if you ever, if for some reason you ever lose cellular connection to the device, everything that has already been loaded in, so all of your transmitters, your cards, your fobs, all of that will continue to work. So your customers are not going to be stuck out of their gate or door. Everything that is preloaded will continue to work. You will notice it when you try to log into the software, maybe, maybe to run a report or to change a time schedule. You won't be able to connect. But everything's still going to work. The odds of losing signal are very rare. But if you do, this is all of the memory is saved locally inside this unit. So everything will continue to work, which is an, a really nice feature. So what we have here is we have our main power input, 12 through 24 volt DC over here. You have one relay output. You have your Wigan wiring here, and then you have an input. The input allows you to monitor the status of the gate or door. It will tell you if it's open or closed, and you can set through the software an alert to email you after a filter time. So if the gate's been open for five minutes, it will send an email to the email addresses that you've selected there. For that input, you would just use a simple door or gate position sensor or tie it into uh, the input on the gate operator that uh, knows the status of the gate. So that's for the input. The output is obviously the relay output. 
The Wiegand inputs make it so that you can use any Wiegand device. We happen to have our Wiegand card reader keypad and a Wiegand 433 megahertz receiver wired into this unit right now. But you can use any of the popular brand Wiegand devices. We don't care who you use. So you don't have to rip out all of the existing Wiegand controls to use the PAL. You can keep the existing transmitter receiver combos, the existing card readers, the existing keypad, whatever it is, as long as it's Wiegand. You can wire it into our Wigan input, and our system will now track it and manage it all through the software, which makes it, again, really nice. So you think about a lot of sites that are standalone. Uh, you can simply and very inexpensively convert them over to a system where they have full control over through the cloud, which is obviously the big word in the industry right now. Can I manage it through, the, through any computer? Can I manage it through my tablet? Can I manage it through my phone? The answer to this is yes. And you don't have to replace all of the hardware. This will work with any Wigan devices, okay? And again, one of the big reasons for this is because we know that physical credentials are still very important in this industry. Physical credentials are a fail-safe. They always work. They're going to work. And there, it's an easy way to keep track of, of your people. So we want to give you the ability to use physical Wigan credentials. Again, we work with all manufacturers, Wigan devices, as well as the virtual credentials so your customers can have the best of both worlds. That's, that's what this device has been built for. So that is the wiring and the setup for the PAL controller. You would use one of these at, at each gate or each door. It looks like we already have a question. Alex, you want to read that to us? <coughs> Excuse me. Good question. So I know half of the answer to that question. The, and I think when I answer this, most guys are going to know. So if someone knows, please chime in uh, with the answer here. So yes, it can be used for, with solar because the draw is almost nothing. Like I said, you're going to be 12, 12 through 24 volts DC. And when active, this device uses 30 milliamps, OK? 30 milliamps when active. So it's drawing very, very little amounts of power. With that being said, I don't know how, what size solar panels or any of that you would need with that draw. If someone knows just the quick math off the top of their head from their experience, please write in and let us know. But 30 milliamps is the draw of the device. Okay, good question. Again, keep the questions coming if you have any questions. By the way, I forgot to mention, this is being recorded, so if you don't stress too much about writing everything down, it's going to be posted to our YouTube channel, I believe, today. Alex, is that true? Yes. Al Alex says that's true. So it'll be posted on our YouTube channel so you can watch it. We'll also be sending out an email. So a couple things to keep in mind now. Like I said, the memory is all local on this device. So if the network connection is ever lost, you don't have to worry. People are still going to be able to get in and out of the gates and doors that uh, PAL is controlling. The memory size. Let's talk about the memory size of the unit. The unit will hold unlimited virtual credentials. So you can have as many virtual credentials as you want on this device. Now that we're talking about the virtual credentials, I will bring up the virtual credentials. There is a one-time fee for the virtual credentials. We are selling them like you would sell an a actual card or fob. So the way that that works is if you have a site that orders a PAL unit, uh, and you know they're going to want to use virtual credentials. The, the PAL unit comes stock with five free virtual credentials. Five free virtual credentials, mobile credentials, app-based credentials, however you want to use it. It comes with five free of those, of those. Those are tied to a phone number. And I'll show you what I mean here in just a minute. But basically, when you create a user, you have the option to enter a phone number. If you enter a phone number, then a virtual credential is automatically assigned to that user. They would download the PalGate app, and they would see that device in their system, which then they can now control from their app. You can restrict their control and when they're allowed to open it through this management system, but they're now allowed to use it. Now that one person has been assigned, you would have four of the five free virtual credentials available. As soon as those five are used, you would call your sales rep, and it's simply like ordering cards or fobs. Hey, Quinn, 
I need to order 50 more mobile credentials. Okay, we write them up for the price. Again, call your sales rep. It is very, very reasonable pricing. We're not trying to, uh, we're not trying to make this a hard sell. So the pricing is very, very inexpensive. Hey, Quinn, I need to order 50 more virtual credentials. Okay, what's the, what's the serial number or what's the name of the site where this is going? You tell your sales rep, they enter it in, and within minutes, it will be available to your customer. They can then go in and add those. Because it's tied to a phone number, if, if Quinn has a mobile credential on his phone and I lose my phone and get a new phone, most, most of the time people are going to keep their same phone number. As soon as I download the Palgate app, because I have the same phone number, that virtual credential is going to populate again. You don't have to buy a new one every time someone loses their phone or gets a new phone. It's, a, it's assigned to a phone number. Now, if the person moves out, they're no longer living where their mobile credential was getting them in, then that is a, gone now. It doesn't go back into the pool. They would have to buy a new one. So it's tied to a phone number. They use it until that phone number is no longer associated with the property or the customer, and then they would have to buy a new one after that. Again, they're very inexpensive. We also have a yearly plan for customers who have a lot of turnover. We have a yearly plan where you can pay a yearly fee, uh, one-time yearly fee, and they have unlimited mobile credentials, uh, and they'd have to re renew that every year if they want to. There's no contract or anything, but it's just a simple way for your customers that have a lot of turnover. Do we have another question, Alex? Okay. So we do have those options. We do have the pricing and all that established for the mobile credentials. Again, it's very inexpensive. We're trying to keep it like a card or fob. You'd order, it will be assigned. The information you need to have when you order mobile credentials is just either the serial number, which is located on the back of the device, or the name that you've named the device on installation, name or address. We can look it up by all of those things. Okay, any questions on the mobile credentials? I'll show you how to assign those uh, in, here in just a bit. And then they would download the phone app, which I'll show you, and then it automatically populates on their phone once they've downloaded the phone app and put in their phone number and filled out the little form that pops up when they first fill it out. Now, the cool thing is because it's tied to a phone number, if they move out and they move back in with the same phone number, they still would have that mobile credential if it's given back to them and they don't have to buy a new one. So we've made it very cost effective and very fair. But also keep in mind that this system is also tracking and managing physical credentials. So the existing transmitters or new transmitters, cards, fobs, all that good stuff with any Wigan devices. Any questions? I feel like we just went over a lot of information. I want to make sure it's, it's clear. Okay, so again, the biggest sales pitch I tell guys about this product, once you hear the cost, you'll be blown away. It's just so inexpensive, it's crazy. Uh, and so you can confidently walk to a job and let's say, hey, I want an RFID reader for long range and the cars pull up, the gate automatically opens. Someone has quoted an access control system and either they've pushed Wi-Fi out to the gate, which is expensive, with a point to point, or they're using a wireless device, or they've quoted and they've trenched and run network cable, whatever it may be, all of those are expenses and they're costs. You can walk out there and say, no, don't worry about it. I've got cell signal here. I've got this little device. I'm just gonna put it inside the gate operator. I'm gonna wire my Wigan UH, UHF RFID reader to it, wire the relays to the gate operator, and I'm done. Totally done. Oh, and by the way, you can manage this through an app, through any computer, through the web-based software, or through a tablet, through the web-based software or app. You're gonna win the job every single time because it's that easy, and when I show you the web-based interface, you'll be pumped up, because it's so simple to use uh, and just really, really user-friendly. Another thing to keep in mind is through the web-based software, you can manage as many PAL devices, controllers, this guy, on one site as you want. And if you add a user, you can tell it who you, where you want that user to be sent to, which devices they have access to, all with one click of a button. So it's very, very simple. We've built it so that you can have 20 PAL devices on one property, 100 on one property, one, it doesn't matter. The mobile credential also is assigned to sites. So if you have 20 PAL devices on one site, you only need to buy one mobile credential per, cu per customer and it's gonna let them in the doors that they have access to, doors and gates they have access to. You don't have to buy one for every device, only per site. So if you have one site with 20, you buy one, mob you buy mo one mobile credential per user, they can access all of the access points on the property they have rights to, and then another job down the street, it's a gym, let's say, then another mobile credential would be used at that site. So again, trying to keep it, the pricing and set up very fair. Any questions so far? 
one relay output, one Wigan input, uh, one relay input for tracking and monitoring the status of the door gate, and 12 through 24 volt power at 30 milliamp draw. Okay, again the memory, unlimited mobile credentials, 4,000 memory storage for the proprietary non-clonable power remote, and 16,000 memory for Wigan credentials, transmitters, cards, FOBs, any of that. 16,000 memory for Wigan credentials, unlimited app, and 4,000 for the PAL non-clonable remote, okay? So a lot, of, a lot of storage. Let's jump over here now to the cloud-based software. <clears throat> Again, we start at transmittersolutions.com. We have posted uh, all of the PAL information here. If you go to our products, the board's not letting me be interactive here. I'll go old school and use the mouse. So if you go to our products, and then come down to PAL. Can everybody hear me OK? Somebody give me some feedback if they can hear me OK. I can talk louder, but we're trying to, we want to make sure the volume's clear so we don't just crank it up. We, th we think everything's okay on our end. Can everyone hear me okay? We're just going to assume so. We haven't had anybody say otherwise, so. Okay, so I'm going to come to the PAL cloud management. And what we've done to help you, we have this nice little video here. We show all of the PAL devices. This is the non-clonable remote that we talked about. We also have a PAL RFID long range system. The nice thing about this one is through the web portal, you can increase or decrease the read range from three feet to 30 feet. Very cool feature. But let's jump into the PAL 26 bit. Actually, before I do that, we're not talking about any of these other devices, but you can mix and match as many of these devices on, uh, you can mix and match as many of these devices as you want on one job and manage them all through the web portal. Okay, we're not going to talk about that right now, but you could put 10 PAL Bluetooths on one job and 10 PAL 26-bit Wigan on one job, and they're all managed through the same portal, and they'd all fall under the same site. Uh, reminder to ask questions, you just type it into the chat box, and we see it on this end, and then Alex will read it. Okay, so let's jump into this PAL Wigan 26-bit controller. You can see here we've given a nice big link where you can actually demo the cloud software, so you can log in here and then use the login credentials here to access the system. That's what we're going to use to log in. And then under downloads, you can see like we have a, the cut sheet you can use, uh, which is a really, really nice cut sheet here. You can also see, which you will get this in your packaging, but you'll see the quick start guide, which just is a simple way to get the system up and running, makes it simple to use. So all of that is available here. But probably the most beneficial thing to you is going to be you can demo the software or allow your customers to demo the software. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump into this. Sales at transmitter. Okay. And again, this is, this is cloud-based. So this, you don't have to be on the same computer. You can be on any computer that you want. And then you can also download the app. Now, I will tell you, I prefer, and technical support here prefers, that the majority of the management is done through the web portal. It is more feature rich. The app is kind of a dumbed down version of it, but the app is still simple to use. But I would, I would have your, your customers do most of the management through, here through the web portal. And anytime you need help, you can call, and we're able to see all of the devices anyway. So we can look at it and say, oh yeah, someone, uh, someone you know, the, the serial number might be wrong, or whatever it may be, we can help you troubleshoot that product. So. Here we have the home page. This shows us everything. As the installer, you will see every single device you've installed and what you've called it. This is just a quick, quick glimpse of what's going on. Your customer will only see their devices. You will still be the parent if you want. You don't have to be. Most people want to see all their installs, and then their customer are only going to see the devices on their property. I will come here, and the first place you're always going to start is by clicking on devices. All I did to see that screen was click on those little three lines. 
click on devices, and this is going to show me. Uh, this is going to show me where all of my devices are. Okay, so right now we only have one device. This is the device that I just showed you on that demo board. This is the serial number of the device, the model of the device, what we have named it, and you can change this at any time, and the address that we have given it, and you can see that it is connected right now. When I want to add a new device, all I do is click on Add in the top right-hand corner, enter in the serial number, and then the code. Both of those are located on the back of the PAL controller. Click Check, and it will tell you, yep, this is good to go, and then you'll just click Save. If it ever gives you an error, it's probably because someone added, tried to add it or has added it, uh, an employee or something like that. Always add the controllers through the web portal. Don't ever add them through the, through the app. Uh, the web portal is where you're going to add the devices and then control most of it and then do easy stuff through the app. Okay, I'm in devices. I have this one device. In order to get into this device to do programming, you're going to click on the serial number link, and this is going to take me into the device. I can click edit, and I can change the name to whatever I want. The user's auto populates every time I add a user. Right now we have none. I can change the output or the relay. What do I want to call it? This right here is what shows up on their app. So when I open the app, if I've been given a mobile credential, it would say front door. So you're going to want to make that pretty descriptive because that's going to, you want to say like ABC apartments front gate, pool gate, whatever it is, make it descriptive so they can know which one they're going to set up, okay? The phone number comes from us. You really don't need to worry about that and the address is set by you all through this edit button here. The log gives you a live look and, a, and it's also saving the information of what is going on with the system. Who's been coming and going, who's been granted access, who's been denied access, time and date stamped. All of that information is saved here in the operation log. You can also look at the audit log. The audit log allows you to see who logged into the system, what administrators logged in and made changes, and what did they do. This is a really nice feature if they're having an issue. You can come in and be like, well, uh, Mark logged in and, and added five users. That's why your mobile credentials are all gone. Mark added them. It says so right here in the audit log. So just another nice feature where you can see what's going on. The charts give you a nice look at voltage history. So you can see if there's maybe been a voltage spike if something's going on weird and signal history. So you can see if your signal's good and if someone calls and said it wasn't, it didn't allow me to make any change, you can come in here and say, oh yeah, your signal dropped for like a minute, but it's back up to where it should be. So again, just another nice feature. Users and settings is where you're going to spend most of your time. So if I go to users, I can import and export entire databases. Just last week, we had a guy who took out a system. He had a full list. He exported it from the old access control system. What he did then was he exported an empty spreadsheet from here put all the information from his old spreadsheet into the one this one created for him and then imported it and he had 6,000 people loaded in here in a matter of 10 minutes. So you can export and import entire lists. You can also individually add. If I click on add, if I click on add, the country code is going to autofill most of the time. This is just a demo system, but for your systems, this country code will autofill so you don't have to worry about it. It's going to make me worry about it though. Okay, so I put the phone number in. Once I put the phone number in, I have assigned a mobile credential to this user. Okay, so Quinn Coford, remote control serial number. This is for the PAL non-clonable remote. If you're going to be using those, it has a number on the back of the remote. You would type that in here, and now they have, are tracking and managed through, through Quinn, the user Quinn, uh, what is going on. Uh, the user, Quinn, what's going on when he's using that transmitter, all that information is done through the remote control serial number. The Wigan facility code you can use, you don't have to, if you ignore it, it stays empty just like it says there. And the serial number is the five digit Wigan serial number on the Wigan credential that you're using. And again, you can use any Wigan credential that you want with this system, okay? Ours, someone else's, but that's where you're going to put that information. The time group, this is where you're going to select, and I haven't created a time group yet, but this is where you're going to select 
what devices they're allowed into, what door gates they're allowed into, and at what times of the day, and on what days. That is all selected here in the time groups, and I'll show you how to create a time group here in just a minute. If I check the box admin, this means that Quinn, in his app, can now add users and view a log for this system. If you don't check the box admin, that means that all Quinn's app does is show him the doors he's allowed to open and only opens those doors and gates in the time that he's allowed to open and close them, set by the time group. We have a question, but I want to finish this thought real quick. The time group, so let's say the time group is called tenants. Tenants pool. That means Quinn is allowed at the pool between whatever the times you set. Let's say 8 a.m. and 10 p.m. That time group applies to my PAL remote, my Wigan device, as well as my mobile credential. Okay? That time group applies to every single device I have, including my mobile credential. So if I come to the pool and I think I'm funny, I'm like, oh man, I'm going to get in. I click my phone to get into the pool and it's 11 p.m. and I'm not allowed in at 11 p.m., it's not going to work. If I go to the pool and scan my card and I'm not allowed in, it's not going to work. That time group applies to all devices the user has. The admin, again, allows them to control things through the app. Not checking this box allows them just to be a normal mobile pass. Okay, sounds like we have a question. 26-bit Wigan only? Okay, so the question was 26-bit Wigan only. 26-bit Wigan is the default. We can do other Wigan as well. If you have a system with other Wigan, let us know. It should work. If it doesn't, our engineers are happy to write something that makes it work and it's done pretty quickly. So we can work with almost all Wigan, definitely 26 and most of the others, but if you run into an issue, let us know. Good question. Okay, so then I would click finish, save. I'm just going to cancel this and then Quinn would show up here and Quinn would now have access to the device when he's allowed to have access. Go into settings. Settings is where you can set your output time, so the relay time. Organizations is who sees this device in their web portal. So it's usually going to be us, you as the installer, and your customer would show up here. Those are the people that see when they log in, and you can, you can manage this. Timer events are the seven-day timer. So you can set when you want this thing to automatically open, unlock, close, and you can do a bunch of these. So these are all intervals for for the days that you want this thing to automatically open and close. Okay, so there is a seven day timer built into it, set there. Time groups is where you're going to create a group. So you can see I've created a group called office hours. You can set a start date and an end date so it can expire. You can set your time and your days and you can add as many times as you want, what we would call intervals. Okay, so all of those restrictions are done here. So they're, this person, the people that are part of the office hours, their mobile credential, their Wigan credential or their PAL credential only work during the office hours that have been set here and that's been applied to them as a user. Input, this is where you can enable that and you can set, okay, let me know after, I'm just going to do 10 seconds and add a new email. I would put my email in here, save that and after 10 seconds if that input is still open, then it's going to send me an email and say, hey, your input is open, your gate is open, you need to close it, and you can jump on your app and close it, or close it with your Wigan credential. Remote control, this is for if you're using the PAL non-clonable remote, you can actually say which buttons open which relay on the device or disable them. This makes it nice if you have a lot of PAL systems very close together and you're using transmitters, you can determine which button opens which system. And then tools, this is where you can delete or duplicate the device. Now, this is for <coughs> a single PAL installation. Once you get into sites where you're, and we have them, just so you know, once you get into sites where you're doing multiple PAL installations, where you have multiple PALs on one system, you would create what's called a place. And this is when I would suggest, well, I'm just going to tell you, the first time you do it, call myself or Dan or your sales rep and we will help you. What a place does is, let's take, use our ABC apartments. Let's say they have a front gate, a back gate, and a pool gate. They have three gates. All three of them have the PAL Wigan uh, controller on them. You don't want the person to have to go in and add a user to every single one of those every time. It'd just be annoying. So you would create a place and call it ABC apartments, 
and then you're going to go add the devices, front gate, back gate, and pool gate, to that place. That means every time your customer comes in here, they go to places, it's the only option they'll have, they'll go to places, they will see ABC Apartments listed here, they'll click on that, they'll go in, add their users, click save, and it pushes to all three gates, or only two of the gates, or only one of the gates, whatever they've determined in their places. And then that mobile credential will work for whichever place that they've determined. This makes it so that you can have as many PAL devices on one site, and you don't have to go into each individual one and make changes. You can do it all through what we call a place. Now this is nice because if you have a customer with numerous sites, you don't want them to have 12 different logins. So they can have one login, as many other managers as they want can have login, and they can go through and they can have ABC apartments, uh, you know, whatever it is, DEF apartments, you know, whatever the apartments are, one, apartment one, apartment two, apartment three. They have three different properties, all with PAL gates, and they can go through and they can manage all of them as individuals or all of them together. All of the places is customized. Like I said, the first time you set up a place, so the first time you do an installation with numerous PAL devices, call us, we'll walk through it. It's very simple, uh, but it will save you a lot of frustration and headache. But, so this now makes it to where you can have one, two, 50, 100, 10, whatever you want on a, a site, and they can all manage it through one click of a button, not clicking on each individual PAL unit. So, you can see, and there, there are a lot more buttons here on the left-hand side. All of those are waiting for new features. This is, because it is a cloud-based system, feet, upgrades are automatically pushed to your system. There's no downtime or anything like that, and we will alert you with those uh, when they come out. But this is a system that is extremely simple to use. I can't even tell you how much money you will save your customers, but also make on your end, just because you'll be so much less expensive than the competition, and, and the ease of use. We, we get huge reviews from people who just say, man, my customer loves this because it's so simple. And then you can, you can get the benefits of both the, the mobile credentials and the physical credentials, which I promise you everybody, everybody is going to want, everyone wants phone app stuff, that's the big word right now, but they still want physical credentials too because it's faster and easier, right? So this is the way to do it. I can't stress enough how inexpensive these are. We have them on our shelf ready to go now. We've had great success. And uh, it's just a simple to use product and it gives, if you're doing the sales pitch, it, there's just so much more to pitch your customer for such less money that you're gonna win the job, hopefully every time, but most of the times for sure. So hopefully that has explained it to you. Again, we go quick because we wanna get you back out working. We know you're busy. Uh, but you can get excited to see just how cool this is and how easy it is, and there's not a lot of stuff that you have to worry about. It's all right there. Okay, we have a question. In order to manage the system, do you have to have a phone number? That is, take a page slot, take a page slot? Uh, I'm not sure I answered the question. I'm not sure I understand the question, so I'll answer it from what I think you're asking, and please clarify, is you do not, I'm going to take a drink real quick, hold on. In the user section, you can leave that phone number blank. You do not have to issue a mobile credential to every user. So in the, in the user section, when I go to add, if I leave this section blank, the phone number, it autofills a fake number, which is then just basically a user ID at that point. And I, let's just say I put in Quinn, and I'm going to do my serial, my Wigan serial number is 12345, uh, and I'm not going to use the facility code then I can click finish and it will save that and I do not have to put in a phone number. Now Quinn does not have a mobile credential. He, I can download the app and I'm not gonna have a mobile credential, okay? It won't even let me do anything when I download the app, but Quinn's Wigan transmitter or card, whatever it is, it's one, two, three, four, five, is gonna work during the selected time slot. Not every user is administrator. Administrator, okay, so the, sorry, the question's, administrators. Hopefully what I just explained there explained something to somebody or just wasting my time. No, I'm just kidding. But administrators, uh, administrators do not have to, well, administrators would have to have a phone number, but because that's using the app.
but they would not have to have a mobile credential. I get what you're saying now. Okay, making sense. My brain just clicked. You're asking if I click administrator, do they have to have a mobile credential? The answer is, administ if you want the administrator to use uh, the app, then you would put a phone number in and you would not have to use a mobile credential so there would be no charge, okay? But what you can also do is give administrators, what I would prefer and recommend is to get an administrator set up with an email for the web portal, which there's not a charge for that. And that way they can have full access rights, not just the app updates. Does that make sense? Does that answer the question? Another question, okay. Yes, yes. It's, so I don't know if you heard the question. Sorry, do you have a mic on? Okay. Al, the question was, is everything that we're showing currently available for sale? Every, oh, are you talking about this stuff? Everything I showed you here is for sale. Yes. All of this is in stock right now, ready to ship. I actually think we just sold out of the Bluetooth controller now that I say that, but we do have more on order. But yes, everything I've shown you is for sale. We have not shown you anything that's not ready for sale. One more, one more question. Another question? Uh, he, I, he says, I have a handful of customers that have a button under their desk that can latch the gate open, et cetera. Of course, you have to run wires all the way through. Is there a way to use this in that way? OK, good question. I should have addressed this. I'm sorry. Let me open up my app real quick. Let me. Let's go ahead and let's switch back to the PAL device. I'm going to open my app and I'm going to show you guys how that works because that's a really good question that I did not address. So I'm going to add myself as an administrator. Okay, so I've added myself as an administrator. I'm going to walk over here to the PAL gate app. This is really cool what we're about to show you. And I should have showed you, I just didn't even think about it. It's too much to remember. This thing's so cool, I can't remember all the cool features. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. So this is the Palgate app. This is how it will look. So if I'm on a property that has numerous gates or doors, I would see a list of all of the, the gates and doors that I, as the user, have been given access to. So I'd see the front gate, the back gate, and just gate. Okay, these are just made up things in my app. Because I'm an administrator, I have this little wheel off to the side, this little cog. This is our system right here, front gate. So if I was to click on it, it would trigger the gate. It says open successfully and my lights just blink, the relay triggers. Because I made myself an admin in the app, I have the ability to click on this little wheel and click on manager options because I'm a manager. And this allows me to see users, which is only myself, to run a history, which is me opening, just doing that there, and to latch open the gate. Okay, so it's going to say, hey, you're going to latch open the gate, changing relay state, and now my relay is latched. You can, administrators, people who have been given administrative rights, are the only people that can latch the gate, and it's done through the app. The reason we did that, I mean, it's, it's obvious, but I'll explain it is we do not want standard users being able to latch open gates and doors. So if you've created someone as an administrator, they can latch open the gate or door through the app. Just like I showed you there. So yes, it can be done. Another question, do you want to read it into the mic? Does that work? Okay, just read it to me. Okay, so the question is, well, basically the, the question is, if I'm a user, if I'm Quinn, I'm coming up to, my gate, to the pool gate, and I'm a tenant at wherever it's installed, and I'm only allowed in between 8 and 11. It does not show you, it doesn't tell you when you're allowed in the gate. What it does do is if you go to open, it's going to say denied, access denied. It's not going to let you in. But no, it does not show you in the app the hours that you're allowed in. All it shows you is the name of the gate, okay? But it doesn't say, Quinn, you're allowed in between 8 and noon. It just says front gate, or let's pool gate. 
Code walks up to the pool gate at 11 p.m. and he's only allowed until 10. It's just going to say access denied and then in the log it will show you that Quinn attempted to open the pool gate at 11 and it shows you if it was a weakened credential or a mobile credential. It shows all you that in the log as the administrator. Does that answer the question? Yeah, I, I mean, I would recommend getting some of these and trying them. They are just so, so easy to use and just the feature sets are so rich. So what other questions do we have? I've explained a lot in 45 minutes and the questions have been awesome. Uh, so what other questions do we have? Okay. It, please let me know your questions. So the, the presentation is done. Um, hopefully it was informative. Give me some feedback, guys. Is this something you think you, you guys are going to use? We're really excited about it. Let me, know, uh, let me know what you think. Is this something good? I need my ego boosted a little bit or else I'll go home and cry. Tell me I'm the greatest presenter in the world. Okay, so they want to see the multiple units per location. So I'm logged into an account that doesn't, uh, doesn't have the rights for it, but I'll explain it to you. So the devices is a section where you have individual devices that you can go into and edit. A place is basically a site. So you would click add place and you would enter the place name. We'll stick with our ABC apartments here. You would enter the address and then the type would be just general. I'd click save. It's not going to let me do it no matter what I do, so I'm not going to try. What would happen is it would then pop up here under places. Once I'm in that place, I can select that place as the administrator. This is all administrative right now. And I would say, I have this serial number, this serial, and this serial number. One installed in the front gate, one installed in the back gate, one installed in the pool gate. That all fall under ABC Apartments. I would go into the settings of the place and click add device and go add each of those devices to the ABC apartments place. What that now does is when your user logs, when your customer logs in, they go to places, in places they select ABC apartments, they go in and add a user, it pushes that user to every device in the place. It pulls a log from every device in the place. It sends timers to whatever time, whatever device in that place that they want. It's all done it was created so you don't have to sit there and change, add Quinn to three different devices. Does that answer your question? It's really cool. It makes it very simple to manage. Again, when you get in into inst your first install like that, call us. We'll walk you through it. It's super easy. Thanks, Mike, for that information. That's good to know. Okay, what other questions do we have? No one's, oh, oh, Joe told me it was incredible. Thanks, Joe, I appreciate that. Oh, and Chase, thanks, Chase. And Brant, oh man, some good feedback here. Thanks, guys. Next time, if you guys give me enough praise, maybe next time I'll do a little song and dance, but you're going to have to really beg. Okay, so the presentation is done. Uh, we'll stick around here for about five minutes, uh, well, as long as you guys want, answering questions. Uh, please ask any questions you have. The best thing is to get your hands on one. Call your sales rep. You will be blown away with the price. I promise you, you will be blown away. They're just so inexpensive, especially for what they do. I know we've got a few guys on here who have used them uh, and really liked them. So. Thank you so much for attending. We'll stick around for questions.